Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to discuss my three favorite videos on quant finance. So this is gonna be a short video. I hope you like it. Do watch the videos. They're actually amazing and have had large impacts on my life and why I became a quant. So the first video is Quants, The Alchemist on Wall Street. It is an amazing video. I discovered this video probably right around my senior year of my finance degree in undergrad. Um, I watched it, I liked it, I loved it. Every single thing in the movie I felt was like actual advice. And the best part of all three of these videos is that the people they interview are actual industry practitioners. Um, the Alchemist on Wall Street though, a lot of these people are either retired uh, or they wanted to remain anonymous. So I actually like this because the reason is, is that what they're telling you is actual facts. Uh, these are things that people would be more or less kind of shy or afraid to tell you in the real world because they don't want to get fired. They don't want to be blackballed outside of Wall Street. And so it has very good information. Uh, in this video, I believe Paul Wilmot, as well as other leading quants are actually quoted or interviewed in these videos. And so I think the advice you'll find very helpful in exactly what a leading quant is and kind of what they do and kind of the dangers and risks behind quantitative finance. The second video is called The Wall Street Code. And the video covers more or less some of the, I guess, quirks of Wall Street, some of the facts that Wall Street isn't necessarily a purely capitalist system because capitalism is fair. It is the only system that works, especially in my opinion. This is what I believe. Um, but Wall Street in general, there are quirks and things that make it not capitalist. It's kind of a little bit of a twisted industry with some non-fair kind of pieces in it. Uh, I'm not saying Wall Street is corrupted by any means. I do work in Wall Street. I actually like working in Wall Street and banking and finance. Uh, it helps a lot of people out. But this video is on a high and and it talks about more or less some of this inequality that's happening, especially in the algorithmic trading world. This video also touches on Thomas Peter Fee, and he is the guy that invented Interactive Broker. I've mentioned him in another video, but he's like mind-blowing amazing. So you think Steve Jobs is great because he created like an iPad? Uh, this guy already did it before all of them. They used it for trading. He didn't want to patent it. He doesn't believe in patents as he comes from Hungary. Anyways, the, the video is great. I can't, I can't explain it any other way. It's a great video, definitely worth a watch. Again, all these videos are about an hour long, but they're well worth your time. You'll get watching it, and if you're really a quant and you find it exciting, you'll kind of get sucked into the video because it's so good. The third video is called Money and Speed Inside the Black Box. I just recently discovered this. Again, all three of these videos, I think, are by the exact same documentary company that makes them. I'm not endorsing them in any way, shape, or form. I'm not saying their content is good all across the board, but these are just videos that I like. And the video inside the black box talks about the flash crash, and it talks about how the blame got put on different people, uh, all the data that's relevant, how there's a lot of proprietary protections around data, so it's hard to nail down exactly who caused the flash crash. But again, it gives you this industry perspective. You start to see, for example, like on the tech side, they, these people aren't trading with like a, a, a desktop and like a little server next to them. They have massive buildings with huge infrastructure and millions of dollars just to cool the amount of servers inside of one building. And so this really shows more or less the quantitative finance side. It shows a lot of concerns with uh, black box trading as they call it. Uh, there are some valid points in here. There are also, I think, somewhat lenient on the fact that they lean towards the fact that Wall Street's kind of scary and unknown. But I do think that it touches on a lot of the notes about uh, some of the risks involved in these black boxes. And it leads kind of to my concern with algorithmic trading and the fact that we're using machine learning now. And it's not that machine learning is bad. It's that there are a lot of dumb people in the world that will apply machine learning without actually understanding what is happening behind the machine learning processes. But anyways, guys, these are my three favorite videos. Leave a comment below if you like these videos and you watch them or you have watched them in the past. Uh, let me know if there's any other videos that you like to watch on quantitative finance. Um, just in my opinion, as a kind of ending note here, I absolutely hate the Wall Street movies, like The Wolf on Wall Street, for example. 
because it kind of idolizes like this reckless behavior and how like there's just cronyism behind the scenes in every corner and like there's a few guys really winning and the rest of Wall Street screwing over America and the world. You know, oh, and the world's terrible and everyone in Wall Street or finance are just crooks. I just hate it. That's not really what Wall Street is like. And the people making these movies and documentaries, they're not actually on Wall Street. They're not the ones making it happen, especially today. Things might've been different in the past, but it was not 100% corrupted in the past. It's not corrupted today. Yes, there are bad people in Wall Street. There's bad people in the health industry. There's bad people in politics. That's just kind of the takeaway in life. There's bad people everywhere. But in general, people in finance are trying to do the right thing. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.